Implicit differentiation is often a topic that's a little difficult to swallow for students, so we're going to try to take a step back and go one step at a time and see if we can't make this make sense to us. So the first thing I want us to think about is we use the notation d dx and then these brackets of something is a way to describe the derivative of something and that really should say with respect to x. And the second thing is that we use specifically this fraction dy dx to describe the derivative of y with respect to x. So we're going to kind of put these two things together. And there, I want to talk about that because I want to use this notation with what we've currently been using and extend that. So if I have some implicitly defined equation or implicitly defined term and I want to take its derivative, then what I'm going to do is let's, let's talk about something first that we know about the derivative with respect to x of x cubed. Now, we normally think about the power rule by saying we bring down the power, we subtract, subtract one from it. But if you recall with the chain rule, technically speaking, what we're supposed to do is bring the power down, subtract one from it, and take the derivative of that piece to chain that piece on. But the derivative, when it's just x, the derivative with, of x with respect to itself is just 1. So we don't generally consider that when we're dealing when these two letters match. So we just usually write this term. But technically speaking, that comes through. That's a chain, that's a chain rule result. Now, in the case where you have y cubed, now these letters disagree. So since these letters disagree, we follow the chain rule like normal because this is just some, again, the chain rule is just some sort of glob there. So we bring down 3 to the front, we subtract 1, but we have this chained on ddx of y. Well, if we're going to use the convention that dy dx is the derivative of y with respect to x, then we're going to rewrite that as dy dx. Now you may also see that as 3y squared y prime. That's very common in implicit differentiation notation just because it's very compact. So just be aware if you're looking at other resources that that's a very common way to see that written. Now if, what if we have those things together? What if they're added together? Then what we'll have is the derivative being split over each term. Now we know what the derivative of x with respect to itself is. It's just 1. But for this term, this is 3y. So by the constant multiple rule, remember that means we can sort of bring that 3 out to the front. And since we can do that, and we know that the derivative with respect to x of y is just dy dx, this is our derivative of this term. So again, notice we have these dy dx's. And the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to be finding the uh, value of the derivative at specific points. So what we're going to be able to do is get all the dy dx's by themselves and then plug in for the values that still exist, whether or not they're y's or x's. Like in this case, notice we still have a y squared even after the derivative. Now a little more complicated one is this, xy squared. Notice that this is a product of two functions. And we're making the assumption that y is a function of x. It's not always a great assumption, but for our purposes it's going to work because what we're trying to get to um, sort, of, sort of hand waves a little and allows this to work for us. But, so just, just hang on for a little while. So if we're doing this as a product rule, remember the way the product rule follows is you take the derivative of the first one, and you use the original second function and then you use the original first function and take the derivative of the second. So in the first grouping it's the derivative of the first term and the second grouping is the derivative of the second term. Well again we know the derivative of x with respect to itself is 1 but over here we have y squared so we have to follow the, the uh, power rule and then chain rule. So we bring down the 2 we subtract 1 from the power, and then we chain on this d dx of y. 
following through, this is 1 times y squared, which is y squared, 2xy, 2xy, dy, dx. And what you're going to find, generally speaking, is any time you have a term where you're taking the derivative of the y squared, the, the derivative is going to look pretty much like the x squared term, x squared style, with this extra dy dx. Notice how up here, y cubed, it looks very similar to the x cubed derivative, but you have this additional dy dx. This looks very similar, but instead of just being 3, it's a 3 dy dx. And that's sort of a general rule of thumb that helps keep you straight when dealing with these problems.